So good morning to everybody. Today we are going to uh, discuss the properties of uh, semiconductor diodes. So under the semiconductor diodes, we are going to discuss about uh, uh, how the materials are classified based upon your uh, uh, energy band theory. So based upon the energy band theory, that is, we have to look onto your uh, forbidden gap. So based on that. Uh, uh, your materials are probably classified into conductor, insulator, and semiconductors. So here, uh, the forbidden gap uh, for your insulator, your forbidden gap is very wide uh, uh, between your valence band and conduction band. It is approximately uh, uh, eight electron volt. And for your conductor, your valence band and the conduction gap band gets overlapped. Like I mean, that there is no forbidden uh, uh, gap. So for your semiconductor, uh, your uh, valence band and the conduction band get separated by a certain distance, let's say it's approximately uh, one electron volt. So let us uh, we discuss uh, detail about your insulator. So as you know, very well, uh, insulator is a substance which does not uh, pass any electricity to them. Uh, so the best example for this is uh, your rubber, glass and wood. So, in terms of energy band, as I already discussed, there is a wide gap between your valence band and the conduction band. I mean that your uh, forbidden gap is very large. So, as uh, discussed already in the previous slide, that is for your insulator, uh, your forbidden gap is approximately uh, uh, 7 to 8 electron volt. So, that the valence band and the conduction bands are widely separated. Therefore, the insulator uh, not conduct any electricity, even the applications of your large electric field or uh, by heating are at a very high temperature. Next, we move on to your conductor. So, as you know very well, your conductor is nothing but a substance which will pass uh, electricity without any wastage. There is an uh, example for this is uh, copper aluminum water pulse solution. These are all the best examples for your uh, conductor. Next, uh, uh, your conductor is based upon the energy band gap theory, that is, uh, uh, your, uh, the valence band and the conduction band gets overlapped in such a way that uh, it means that there is no forbidden gap. Uh, so, for this reason, a very large number of electrons are available for conduction, even at extremely uh, uh, low temperatures. This conduction is uh, possible even in uh, a very uh, weak electric field also. Next one is a semiconductor. Semiconductors are a substance uh, whose conductivity lies in between your uh, conductor and the insulator. Example is uh, silicon, germanium, gallium arsenide. These are all the best examples for your uh, semiconductor. In terms of energy band uh, uh, theories, there is, there is a uh, narrow gap between uh, your valence band and the conduction band. Say it is approximately a 1 electron volt. I mean that uh, the both your conduction band as well as valence band gets separated by a certain distance. Approximately it is of one electron volt. In semiconductor, the valence band is partially filled, the conduction band is also partially filled, and the energy gap between the conduction band and the valence band is uh, narrow. So next we look on to your uh, classifications of your uh, semiconductors. Semiconductors are uh, classified into two types. The first one is intrinsic semiconductor, and your uh, second type is uh, extrinsic semiconductor. So, intrinsic semiconductors. It is a pure form of uh, semiconductors. It's known as the intrinsic semiconductors. The best example is uh, silicon and germanium. So, both your uh, silicon as well as germanium have a tetravalent. That is, they have four uh, valence electrons. So each uh, uh, atom forms a covalent bond or uh, electron pair bond with the electrons of uh, neighboring atoms. The structure is uh, depicted here. Uh, I mean that the brown color uh, which indicates the silicon atom and uh, the blue color which indicates the valence electron and they are bond that is nothing but a covalent bond. This is the crystalline uh, uh, structure of your silicon or a germanium. So, what about uh, your uh, transit semiconductors at a low temperatures? So, at a low temperature, all the valence electrons are tightly bonded to the nucleus, hence there is uh, no electrons are available for conduction. Therefore, roughly says that at a 
zero temperature or at absolutely zero temperature your semiconductor behaves as an insulator at room temperature uh, uh, what it will uh, that is at a room temperature uh, some of the valence electrons is will gain uh, or acquire uh, some thermal energy to break up the covalent bonds so, such a way that that the breaking of a covalent bonds with the electron spin and uh, it's ready for uh, conduction so when the electron escapes from a covalent bond and becomes a free electrons a vacancy is created in a covalent bond such a vacancy is called a core it carries a positive charge and moves under the influence of an electric field in the direction of an electric field is applied so number of poles are equal to the number of electrons since pole is nothing but an absence of electrons eccentric semiconductors when an impurity is added to an uh, intrinsic semiconductor with a conductivity changes so the process of adding impurity to a pure form of semiconductor is called a doping and now that doped uh, uh, it is called as a impure semiconductor uh, again that is called as an extrinsic semiconductor so depending upon the type of impurity added the extrinsic semiconductor is a further uh, classified into two types that is uh, n type semiconductors and uh, p type semiconductors so extrinsic semiconductor is also of n type uh, semiconductors when a small uh, amount of uh, pentavalent impurities added to your pure semiconductor it is known as uh, n type semiconductors and the addition of uh, pentavalent impurities which provides a large number of free electrons in a semiconductor crystals this types of uh, uh, the best example for your pentavalent impurities are arsenic antimony phosphorus such impurities can produce uh, n type semiconductors are known as donor impurities because they donate or uh, provide free electrons to the uh, semiconductor crystals so here the fig, uh, figure represents the energy band diagram for your n type semiconductors as you know very well there is a small forbidden gap between your valence band as well as the conductor band so it is approximately uh, uh, gets separated by uh, it's of uh, uh, one electron volt so whenever uh, a small uh, uh, pentavalent uh, amount of pentavalent is impurity uh, is added to an uh, silicon that is uh, your bond gets uh, uh, that is uh, it will creates a one free electron so that one free electron will uh, readily detached uh, from that uh, bond and it will ready for conduction so the best example as we know uh, the best example for your pentavalent impurities are arsenic antimony and the phosphorus so these are all the uh, impurities for a pentavalent impurity and moreover we call this type of uh, uh, impurities or uh, called as a donor impurities because uh, they will donate uh, or provide a free electrons to the uh, semiconductors so next extrinsic semiconductors how we are going to convert your extrinsic semiconductors into p type of semiconductors so here uh, in a, a small amount of trivalent impurities added to a pure semiconductor it is called as a p type of semiconductor whereas in case of your uh, extrinsic uh, semiconductor p type semiconductor so you have to add a pentavalent impurities whereas in case of a trivalent impurities uh, if you add a trivalent impurities to a pure form of semiconductor it is called as a p type semiconductor so the addition of uh, trivalent impurities provides a large number of holes in the uh, semiconductor crystal whereas in case of your uh, n type semiconductors we are adding a pentavalent impurities uh, such a way that it provides uh, more number of electrons so here the best example for your uh, trivalent impurities are gallium indium or boron so these are all the best examples for your uh, trivalent impurities such a way that you have to convert a pure form of semiconductor into a p type semiconductor such impurities which produces a p type uh, semiconductor are known as acceptor uh, uh, impurities whereas in case of your uh, n type semiconductors we have called as a donor impurities where here we have called as acceptor impurities because the holes are created which will can accept the electrons in the semiconductor so when we uh, here uh, look on to your uh, band diagram that is uh, uh, yeah one hole is when we adding a trivalent impurities to a pure form of semiconductor that is we have a gallium 
uh, gallium created that is uh, there is a one vacant place is created that is half or tensile therefore it can really you have 